Hello, bug-sized man. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be eaten by a carnivorous plant? No? Well, let's find out. Number five, pitcher plants. Let me out! Let me out! The pitcher plant gets its name from its pitcher-shaped leaves, and it uses these as deadly traps. Picture this. First, your insect brain is lured in by the sweet scent of nectar. <laughs> And once you reach the top, you start slurping to your heart's content. But what you don't realize is the surface you're standing on has a waxy coating, making it extremely slippery. You take one step too close to the edge and... <gasps> you've fallen into the pitcher plant's digestive fluids. The walls are covered in wax too, making it impossible to climb out. And you slowly realize that there's no escape. As your arms grow tired, you begin to drown, and the plant starts digesting you alive. Why must you do this, pitcher plant? Well, that's a great question. Pitcher plants and most other carnivorous plant species live in environments that provide insufficient nutrients. So they've adapted to get the essentials like nitrogen, phosphorus, and magnesium from your flesh instead. No, oh, please. Their diet mostly consists of bugs, but some pitchers are large enough to eat frogs and rats too. Subscribe, dude. Ah. They come in so many different shapes and sizes, like this one. Remind you of something? Yep, that's a toilet. The lid secretes an abundance of nectar that attracts small mammals like the tree shrew. And while it eats the nectar, the toilet bowl catches any post-lunch dumps. That's right, this pitcher plant eats poop. A wholesome symbiotic relationship. My favorite pitcher plant species has got to be the cobra lily, and this is how it would eat you. You're lured in by the scent of nectar again, this time coming from a leaf shaped like the forked tongue of a cobra. <laughs> The concentration of nectar increases as you move further up. The plant's sneaky invitation to get you to climb inside. And eventually you end up inside a beautiful dome with light pouring in through many holes. Having had your fill of nectar, you decide to leave. And there's so many exits to choose from. How convenient. Oh. But it's not an exit. It's a window. You try another one. Oh. Strange. Oh well, you'll just leave the way you came in. But wait, which one was the entrance? Confusion sets in as all the exits you see turn out to be fakes. You don't notice, but this whole time you've been moving deeper and deeper inside the plant. Until... Now unlike other pitcher plants, the cobra lily doesn't digest you with enzymes. Instead, gross midge larvae and bacteria start eating you alive, breaking you down into nutrient soup for the cobra lily to slurp up. <laughs> now if you don't want to be eaten by my pet plant, you should boop the like button. It really helps me out a lot. Pitcher plants are just the first on this list, and there's four more leafy assassins to go. Number four, bladderworm. <laughs> Bladderworts grow in freshwater and wet soil environments, and on the surface they have cute little flowers. But underneath is where the cold-blooded murder happens. One nice sunny day you're swimming along living your best life, and then in the blink of an eye you're suffocating in total darkness. You've been caught in the bladderworts trap. Attached to the plant's underwater stems are these structures called bladders, but instead of holding pee, they act as trap doors. Oh, Come on, dude. First, water is expelled, creating negative pressure inside. And the trap is set. When you came swimming along, you brushed past one of the bladder's trigger hairs, breaking the trapdoor seal. This created a vacuum, sucking you in within milliseconds. The bladderwort's diet consists of nematodes, fish fry, and mosquito larvae, but it can eat larger things like tadpoles too. It does this by digesting you in stages. First it dissolves your head into mush, then your body, then your legs, until you've been completely turned into nutrient soup. Number three, sticky leaf plant. <laughs> Sundews are named after the glistening drops of nectar covering their long, tendril-like leaves. But despite their beauty, these drops have a deadly function. The nectar is laced with a powerful glue, and as soon as you've touched it, it's a wrap. 
literally. The plant senses your struggle, so it starts constricting its tentacles inwards, bringing you into contact with as much stickiness as possible. The secretions coat your whole body, immobilizing your limbs and clogging your breathing holes, causing you to suffocate in a matter of minutes. This whole time, the sundew has been secreting digestive enzymes as well, slowly dissolving you until only a skeleton is left behind. Compared to some of the other plants though, being hugged to death actually sounds like a nice way to go. Another sticky leaf species is the butterwort, named after the buttery texture of its leaves. Works in pretty much the same way as the sundew, except its leaves are broad and flat, so there's more surface area for killing and eating. But not all carnivorous sticky leaf plants do the digesting. The rhododendron macrocephalum has a mutualistic relationship with the mirrored bug. The plant does the trapping, and the mirrored bug stabs you with its face. And then it sucks out your nutrient soup, turning it into nutrient poop for the plant to absorb. But something isn't adding up here. How does a plant that's highly adapted to catching bugs not catch this bug? It turns out that the mirrored bug has an extremely thick coating of grease, completely protecting it from the sticky clutches of the plant. Number two, corkscrew plants. Oh, okay. So one day you're rolling around in the dirt when you stumble upon a tunnel. Where does it go? Is there treasure at the end? You've just arrived at the opening to one of the corkscrew plant's many corkscrew-shaped leaves. As you travel through the spiraling tunnel, you brush past these strange pointed hairs. They're arranged in a way that makes moving into the tunnel very easy, but moving out, out. almost impossible. Your only option now is to go deeper into the cave. And after what feels like ages, you finally reach a nice chamber filled with digestive fluids and a slow, painful, Death. The corkscrew plant's diet consists of protozoans, mites, and annelids. And because of the sheer number of them hanging around in the dirt, the plant doesn't need to attract them. It just sits there and watches as the critters walk themselves into its stomach. Number one, snap traps. I bet you've all been waiting for this one. When you think of a carnivorous plant, the first thing that springs to your mind is the Venus flytrap. But contrary to their name, these plants don't actually eat that many flies. Their diet consists of roughly one-third ants, one-third spiders, and one-third miscellaneous critters. Only 5% are flying insects. Four adaptations make the Venus flytrap an effective killer. First, the leaves of bright red color and sweet nectar smell tricks you into thinking you spotted a delicious fruit. <laughs> Second are these tiny sensory hairs all over its leaves. Nothing happens if you only touch a hair once, but if you touch it twice, as each trap can only operate seven-ish times before dying, this adaptation prevents wasting a snap on something like a raindrop or a fallen leaf. Third, each trap has these long lashes, which look like menacing teeth. Venus flytraps are quite picky with their food, as starting the digestive process takes a lot of energy, so smaller, unworthy prey can escape through the gaps in the lashes. I'm free. But bigger prey like you are trapped inside. Fourth, to make doubly sure that it's caught a big juicy meal, the plant waits until the sensory hairs are repeatedly triggered while closed, before it finally gets ready for dinner time. The trap clamps down even tighter, interlocking its lashes and forming an airtight seal. You slowly die of suffocation, and the plant secretes digestive enzymes, dissolving you over the course of a few days. When it finally opens up, all that's left of you is a skeleton. So many exciting ways to be eaten. Now watch this one next. Or else. <laughs> See ya next time. Yeah.